Dray and uh, I'm gonna go see um, uh, Peter Hastings uh, show here at the, the Dray and um, I'll just do a quick scan around of these yeah so Peter I've been you know following your work on Facebook um, probably on Instagram too are you on Instagram yep yeah so I've probably been seeing it and uh, just absolutely loving and I think the thing that really really uh, jumps out for me is the materiality of the work. Oh thank you. Yeah, uh, so so the paintings now are more like archaeological digs really. They're uh, just, I'm actually cutting away the layers of paint, peeling it back. Oh okay. And uh, literally, so now I'm pulling on low relief carvings because uh, every painting is improvised and I usually do about 10 or 15 variations of the, of the painting that I don't like. And then, so now it's a question of painting very smoothly over rough surfaces. And I think that's the direction oh, I'm yes, going. Yes, 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 yeah. And, and I, like, I like cutting away with the knife because I'm getting more of a definitive line and, and perhaps I'm a frustrated sculptor rather than a painter now. And, and are you working with acrylic? I'm working with all kinds of paints. Okay. And uh, uh, what's the phrase? Uh, uh, preservation requires uh, prosperity requires preservation. Okay. <laughs> so I'm putting lots of varnish on. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, in terms of paint. I, I like uh, mist tints from the paint store. I like ugly paints. Oh, okay, so yeah, so that's and, a, the house painting like gives you that nice yeah, flat. And all quality. these colors, as a colorist, I thought I had reached a stage in my career where I have to I have to tackle all the insincere colors, it's like the baby colors, the non-serious colors. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the, the ones that are are, are, are going to push my career in the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and I'm influenced a lot by uh, Rococo art. I'm, I'm constantly uh, looking at images online extremely fast and then processing them very slowly. My paintings like literally take months because I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm painting a portrait but the origins of the portrait are only coming to me in fragments. So it's mm -hmm. all very mm -hmm. ambiguous. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, a lot of time I don't like what I'm doing. And then suddenly something happens and I like it and I go with it. And uh, yeah, I mean, and, and definitely I'm less interested in sticking stuff on my paintings, like three dimensional stuff. Right, right. And much more interested in the surface quality. Cutting, cutting into it. Right, right. Um, um, yeah, so we can really see that in this one, the layers yeah. of... Um, so, and are you working on wood? As a I'm base? working on masonite. Masonite, I okay. I find that uh, it's almost like lino print in when you're cutting into it. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, so you cut right into the masonite. Yeah, and then, and then gouge your line out. Uh, I, I got stuck... I really started to get frustrated when... You're, when you're butting two colors up against each other with a pencil line, you get this build up and you lose definition. Yes, yeah. And I wanted much more definition, so then I, so then I started to do this low relief car, uh, carving. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I'm almost, I'm, I'm almost at the point now where I'm, I'm, I'm eliminating shadow 
um, completely from the paintings. So it's just it's just the line and the color that's defining the image. Right, it's flat. I mean, this one there has a bit of a it looks like a shadow with the black. Yes. Um, yes. Um, but in general, you're you're working with the flatness of, yeah. of the color and. And you know, and I'm really enjoying the mistakes underneath. Uh, I'm fascinated by the mistakes and the contours of that. Someone, someone actually said that it looks like uh, lidar, lidar, like, lidar. Type oh thing. yes, yes, yeah. Um, yeah. Like seeing the underneath, you know. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, I mean, for me, that's always been the exciting. You know, I've always been interested in making art where you see the process yeah. in, the, in, in the final. Uh, and, and I'm not successful yet, but I, I like the idea that these are like, these are like almost archaic images that, or, or, or something very physical, sculptural that has been dug out of the ground. Hmm. The kind of like a, a, a cross between a kind of emoji and, and, and an ancient iconic sort of image. Awesome, know? oh yeah. And uh, like like something you've discovered in the ground but you don't know what the hell it is. It's a mystery. There's well. a mystery, yeah. you know, uh, which a lot of say uh, archaic or ancient art yeah. is to us. You know, we, you know, you have people who, <laughs> who study, you know, yeah. have their PhDs and trying to understand. That's right, that's right, uh, trying to decode it. Uh, but really, it's all kind of what you felt speculation and uh, yeah. deduction, I guess. Yeah. Um, so talk about the the sculptures now. They're, yeah, well, they're uh, a different kind of accrual. Or... Well, uh, I make them up as I go along. Uh, I'm f quite fascinated with the richness of Rococo. Right. Um, but doing it with uh, found objects. Uh, Totally recycled objects. Uh, I like I like the inserting of the uh, painted panels. Uh, it gives it a very rococo, and I don't take them seriously at all. They're they're sort of an anecdote to my paintings, which take months. These things I just like, I just go wild on them. And so they just come together. Yeah, basically. So that's interesting. Uh, like, they give me that yeah, balance, you know. You would think the physical uh, construction would take longer, um, whereas the, the, painting, the painting yeah. process is a much longer yeah. um, process. And, and it's, it's also it's also that need to be in the physical world making things, three-dimensional yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and also, they're, they're basically an excuse for me to decorate four surfaces. <laughs> they really are. Yeah, and they're know, fun. Which I love to do. I just love decorating a, a three-dimensional object. And... Uh, they're playful, they're fun. Yeah. And, 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 I mean, these four at least are similar enough that uh, they work together as a group. Yeah. And uh, the, the ones I'm, I'm working on now are... I'm using a lot more um, toxic materials. Okay. You know, I, 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 I'm almost thinking of just labeling them on toxic objects. I'm using all the varnishes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff that people keep in their basement that they, right, should, right, right, they right. should throw out. Yeah. And I'm quite fascinated by that, if I can use it in some way. Um, so another part of your um, your oeuvre I've noticed is these sticks that have the many many layers of yeah this paint. is uh, these are um, so these are basically every time I change color on a painting I'll paint a stripe on one of these oh, okay. sticks okay all right and then um, and then I got this idea of calling them clutter sticks and putting mm. on clutter on them and they're essentially I have a certain commitment to street art so like all these these yeah, pieces yeah. will eventually go out onto the street oh okay all right so they'll be very public do you know uh, uh Rocky, Rocky? Oh, yeah. oh okay yeah yeah we interviewed him yeah Rocky our last and interviews yeah okay so you're We're back so yeah we go yeah. a while I've, okay. I've been watching his work for like 30 years. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and then, like I say, they're, they're, they're kind of... 
This also has a bit of a feeling of, uh, what do they call it, cargo cult? Like people who collect things out of the ocean and create art. Like yeah, that. that tradition. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've seen them with, with seashells and things like that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like, you know, and then of course nowadays yeah. people are collecting all the plastics and stuff out of the ocean. Um, but I think, I'm thinking of like... I consider myself the antithesis of Andy Goldsworthy. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm like the urban guy. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's... Uh, uh, I love this kind of stuff, for yeah. sure. And I, 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 I think that's what it's doing in the city. With, with crap. That's it, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The crap guy. I'm the, I'm the crap guy. The urban crap guy. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Well, thanks, Peter. It's, it's well, awesome. I've been following your work for a few years, and uh, we finally get a chance to talk. Oh, thanks, thanks so much. Much appreciated. Thank you.